Welcome to the Progression Health Podcast. I'm here with Lenny Mahi. Lenny, do you want to introduce yourself to the listeners? Hi, Ross. Uh, hi, and thanks for having me on your podcast. Thanks for pronouncing my name correctly. Lenny Mon. Mon. Rhymes with Sean. One syllable. Everyone mangles it, but you got that right off the bat. And we didn't even talk about that in advance. Anyway, glad, glad to be here. Uh, happy to happy to chat with you and uh, relay my uh, unique experience with uh, my own fitness, which is mainly, mainly um, running uh, and yoga. I do yoga every day. I little, do a little bit of yoga every day. I run about three times a week. Um, yeah, uh, 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 Saturday mornings, uh, Monday evenings, and Wednesday afternoon, roughly, is my running schedule. But I love running. I've been running since high school. I had a uh, 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 my uh, gym coach in high school would see me do our, you know, drills around the track as we everyone in gym class had to do. And he said, Lenny, I want you to try out for the track team. And uh, he nudged me. I tried out. I found out that I was good at it at the cross country option, the long distance op- option, more than sprinting. And uh, I, I've been a runner ever since, ever since leaving high school. And so whenever I get time, I go do a run. So been um it's been a regular part of my life i don't know what it li- is like to be an adult and not be a runner <laughs> well that's quite the claim i think it's a big challenge for a lot of people to stay active you know as they get older it's a common story that you know a coach will persuade them when they're younger but to stick it out is the real difficult challenge so what did that coach initially say to you that persuaded you you know to to try and push yourself no he just took a Took an interest in me, and um, and you know when a when it when a teacher authority figure takes an interest in you and thinks that you can do something that you you never thought you could do, you you listen to them. You know, I was seventeen, I think, and uh, he took me under his arm and joined the team. I enjoyed running with the guys on the team too, getting a kind of a bonding with the with the with the guys. Um, and uh, this was in uh, Staten Island, New York City, Port Richmond High School. Uh, and we did our drills over the Bayonne Bridge, running across the bridge from New York to New Jersey and back and forth. So I've all, I have a fondness for running on bridges since then. So I live not too far from the Golden Gate Bridge, and I, I love running over the Golden Gate Bridge whenever I get a chance. Uh, so I've uh, just um, I've I, I also find that running gives me a, a nice little quote unquote runner's high. And pretty regularly, ever since I was uh, 17 years old, after I hit the, the uh, five kilometer mark, uh, um, about uh, 3.1 miles, I get this flow state, this buzz, this real, really pleasant feeling. And I just want to keep going and going and going. And uh, I don't really feel any, any uh, necessarily any, any, any pain or effort. I just feel so natural. And that's the state I love to get myself into. Um, it's like a drug, but it's legal and uh, it's free, but you have to work to earn it. Yeah, the key part is working to earn it. That's what makes it so much more beneficial. <laughs> so, uh-huh. so yeah, it's cool. You mentioned having a, me- a mentor almost, you know, or a role model that's like so important and community as well, running with other people. Those are just like two things that I think it's hard to find as an adult, but that are very important. It is. And I'm really um, glad that I, I, took the effort. This was in 2010, about uh, 13 years ago. I took a vacation to New York City where I went to high school and I looked up my coach. I looked him up and I found him and I emailed him, found his email. He didn't know, he didn't remember me. You know, that was some time ago. He had just retired. Uh, and, but anyway, I told him some things that he trained me on and he knew that I knew that, that I was on his team because these were things that no one else would know. So anyway, I met up with him. We went met at a pizza place in uh, Manhattan. So we had a pizza and a couple of beers and uh, just uh, kind of reconnected. And I was very happy to uh, express my gratitude for the seed that he planted in me that lasted me a lifetime. And he was he was happy too to to know that I cared, even though he didn't remember me at the beginning. So I think it's also good uh, to uh, reach out to your mentors. Um, they may not be the people that you thought they would be, but if somebody has inspired you, especially for running or whatever, uh, find them, reach out to them and tell them thank you for 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 showing me the way. It's a really it feels good uh, yourself and it feels good to them, too. Absolutely. I give them back, especially 
right. someone who dedicated their life to something like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So did you get the runner's high back then when you started initially? And has it just continued the whole way through? Has it just been I, a constant? I, I did. There was some media buzz, buzz about it at the time. And I thought, Ooh, that's interesting. You know, I'm 17 years old and you know, I'm, I'm not going to be, you know, going to the cannabis store to buy any drugs or anything like that. This was a long time ago. This was, uh, uh, something that, um, it was intriguing to me. Um, and, uh, and especially the fact that it didn't cost any money <laughs> to do it. And I, uh, yeah. And I, I found it, was it psychosomatic? Was it, um, an expectation, a, a placebo. I don't know, but the fact is, I to this day, even I ran last night with a group I run with on Mondays, and uh, and you sure as clockwork uh, at the three point one mile mark, woohoo! I'm feeling good. I'm just keep keep going. That's kind of why I don't like to run five k races because uh, right at the five k mark is when I start feeling good, and you know, at a race five k race, that's when you're supposed to stop. And I want to keep going, so I like the longer races. And the longer runs, solo runs, just any kind of a long run. Yeah, and, and the 5K is pretty brutal because you're going to be potentially in anaerobic, like that kind of more exhausted state. So Right. Yeah, you, you hold the so-called 5K pace for that. Go, You go all out for that. That's the idea behind a, a 5K. Uh-huh. Yeah, I get, I, get this, I get this high, even at an easy conversational effort. I get it regardless of my, my, my pace. Wow. And is that something that you are motivated by to run? Like, do you kind of chase it a little bit or you just sort of let it happen? I just, it, I, it it just happens. It just happens. Uh, Even at a, at a pace, maybe as slow as an 11 minute mile. And that's kind of like just a little bit above what you might consider uh, power walking, speed walking. But, uh, but I know it's going to happen. It does happen. It happens all the time. And I'm very grateful that I have the brain receptors or whatever it is that makes that work. I have some running friends, and you probably do too, who are always saying, what is everyone talking about? What is this runner's high? I don't understand this at all. And, well, that's a bummer, but they maybe they just aren't wired that way, I guess. So, so as a minimum, you would always just run three miles, and then it just continues on for duration of your runs? Or do you have a certain kind of plan of how you run you know, when you're setting out your weekly schedule? Um, well, currently my schedule is I, I run with a group on Monday evenings. I run with a group uh, Saturday mornings and I do some kind of a solo run Wednesdays or Thursdays. And I make it up as I go along, whatever I'm going to do in my solo run. So yeah, group runs, um, uh, solo runs and race the occasional races. For example, beta breakers is coming up this, um, this coming Sunday. Um, so I mix it up. I would like to mix it up. I, I, um, but I, I generally go long. Uh, there was one period when I was working really hard and there was really no time to run. So I just get up extra early and run maybe, maybe five miles or so and then get cleaned up and get to work. Um, and, uh, that's better than nothing, but I would have preferred to keep on going rather than go to work. <laughs> And is it that you go at such a manageable pace that you actually have the energy to to keep on going? You kind of go at the top. I, I do. Of pace? I've discovered that uh, as long as I bring provisions, something to drink and something to eat along the way, and I have ba- I have four different backpacks of different sizes that I use. As long as I carry with me what what I need, I can just keep going and going and going. I could go all day. I think uh, I think um, the longest run I've done with that you can consider like one continuous run with occasional breaks of of course is uh, sunrise to sunset uh, in in the summer when the days are long so maybe maybe uh, uh, 6 a.m to 10 p.m maybe i i did a um a long run. that was the day i ran around the perimeter of san francisco i thought uh, as a challenge why don't i just head to the the coast of San Francisco, which is a peninsula surrounded on three sides by water and just hug the coast as much as I can all the way around. And I did that. And that, I remember that took me, took me all day. And it, I, it's, it's, I, yeah, I was tired and I was ready to go home, but I could have kept going. But, you know, at some point, why there's the concept of a 24 hour race. I'm sure you've heard of where you just run as far as you can in 24 hours, run 
a straight line, run a trail, run around your backyard, whatever. Just go as far as you can 24 hours. And that's kind of intriguing, but I'm not really interested in doing that because I, I like my sleep. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. When it cuts into my sleep as well, I'm, I'm out. I'm, I'm not in for that, but you mentioned group running. So how important is group running to be able to run for such a long time as you've been around for? I, I, I am able to self-motivate myself to, to, to tune in and just go. I, Sometimes I'll listen to music along the way and that helps motivate me. Sometimes I won't. I'll just listen to the sounds of nature. Sometimes I'll do both. I'll listen to music at a volume where I can also hear the outside and the music at the same time. That's more often the case. Uh, with group runs, I don't listen to music because I want to be engaged and, and truly run in a conversational pace and just, just chat with the, peop- the, the subgroups that I'm running with and just uh, make, it a, make it a social time as well. Now, for races, that's not – generally, the races are a bit faster, a little bit above conversational pace with, you know, the occasional, oh, hey, Jim, how you doing? Hey, blah, 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 you know, and then, okay, see you later, and then back back on the race. Uh, so I like uh, running with groups for social reasons, and there's also a type of synergy you get when you are with a lot of other people doing the same thing. It's it's exciting. It's it's It's, it's good for people watching. And there's just something about being with a crowd of people, um, even if you're not communicating with them. For sure. Yeah, I definitely would have felt that as well, where it becomes, you know, obviously I would run to try and be fit and healthy, but I actually get so much of a social buzz out of it that it's like nothing else, you know, mm-hmm. and it's it's harder to get in, in other, you know, being sedentary, for example. So, yeah, right. I definitely. Yeah, I definitely get that. So. You talked about running around the city. You run. How how would you describe the running you do? The the art running you do. What would you point it as? The the art running. Yes. Okay. Well, that's just one of the many many types of runs I do. I think that's the one people think of when they think of me. But uh, really, it's just a occasional thing that I do. But that said, I I I was fascinated with the advent of GPS technology and how only about. 10, 15 years ago, we could actually easily get free apps and or watches and have uh, have them connect to GPS satellites and to record our route rather than having to uh, remember or use a, a highlighter to, to put it on a, on a paper map or to even write down where you were. It's such a such a advance and a useful um, part of technology. Uh, that said, uh, I started using it and I noticed that some of my runs started to look like shapes and so did other runners. And, and it's, it was interesting to kind of look at a run and speculate and maybe, oh, that looks like a rabbit or, or, or a duck or a, a, a flower or whatever, a dinosaur or something. So I thought, you know, why don't I just begin with the end in mind and maybe intentionally run a shape that's going to be a specific thing so um i thought i'd do a um a trial run if you will a proof of concept of that and i thought okay what am i going to do uh something simple and just uh just at the same time this was after leonard nimoy the actor who portrayed mr spock on star trek had died so that i just had just been reading about him and i thought well the vulcan hand salute is um is a simple simple thing to do, especially with Market Street in San Francisco, which runs diagonal to the other streets around it. So I just got a paper map. I used a, a um, highlighter to highlight out my route. It was only about five miles. And I um, started and finished and did that before work one day. And uh, boom, boom, it was there. It was just like I designed it. W- with the uh, additional surprise of the chaotic uh, uh, nature of gps lines it's never perfectly the tracing what you're doing and i love that it adds a bit of of chaos to it a little bit of surprise and some unexpected uh, twist to it yet the whole overall idea shape is is obvious so since i did that successfully i was excited i just kept drawing more things and running them and seeing how they looked out and and uh, after a few months i realized that uh, i've been doing about one of these every month and I thought, you know, I'll, I'll just kind of commit to doing one a month rather than thinking, oh, someday I'll do that again. Because you know how that goes. You, if you don't have a 
something calendared or a deadline for something that sometimes never gets done. So I'm on a streak now. So that was, uh, oh, I don't know, 2015, I think. So seven, eight years ago. So I, uh, I'm on a streak of doing at least one of these pre-designed runs every month. And I continue to be challenged to find things. I think I have it easier than most people in, in their cities, though, because San Francisco has a very tight street grid uh, that is l- largely a grid line, east, west, north, south, which with enough um, angles and twists and turns there to find designs in the street. Uh, some other cities, it's just not that easy to do. Uh, I only do this in San Francisco, but by request of some other people, I've looked at maps of uh, Paris and London and and such. And uh, I don't really see anything. It's not that easy out there. So I, I acknowledge my uh, advantage of living in a place that allows that. And the weather here is beautiful for running. Last night we ran in a, my group ran through fog. It was really nice, really good, really comfortable for running. The hills are, well, hills are hills, but uh, it keeps you in shape to hit, hit those hills. And you can't avoid the hills if you're running in the interior of the city or even on the, on the coast in a lot of places. Be, continue to plan a run, think about what I want to do and draw something and use that as my guide for uh, finishing it. And uh, I'll just keep that going. And of the, the art runs that you've done, what was your favorite one? Because you've quite a few on your, on your Strava. Uh, I think I'm at over 100 of them. I have over 100 of these. And it's really, really hard to, to find a favorite. There are different ones or different, uh, different uh, favorites for different reasons. And usually the most recent ones I finish are my favorites. Most recent one I did was a rendition of uh, Henri Matisse, the, 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 the artist, uh, his uh, Blue Nude Number no. 2, a famous uh, outline of a, of a figure. And um, it, it was he, he created it in a real chaotic uh, kind of a abstract sense. And so I ran that shape and it added another level of abstraction to it. So I, I really like that one, but they're all different. Before that, I did, um, uh, uh, I did um, a rabbit. Um, I'm also on a streak doing the lunar new year runs. Uh, last year was, this year is the year of the rabbit. Last year is the year of the, uh, the tiger. Uh, before that, the year of the ox and so on. So I've been drawing taking my time on these ones, drawing a really nice uh, uh, animal for these. And I'm really proud of the rabbit that I did, that I created to celebrate the year of the rabbit. Um, so this is an annual thing that it goes through 12 cycles. I think I'm five, I've done five of them so far. So I've got about uh, what, seven years left to finish this annual project. And the next one next year is the year of the dragon. So I have about you know nine or 10 months here to think of how to draw a dragon on the streets of San Francisco. So I will do it. And it's going to be pretty, pretty cool dragon shape here. I just don't know what it's going to look like yet, but I have some time to draw it and do it. I look forward to that. No doubt you'll, you'll do a good job as you have done. But my, my favorite is the Banksy one you did because I would have known Banksy growing up. being Banksy. From Ireland. Yeah. Yeah. That was a collaboration I did with my, my buddy, Frank Chan, who, also does uh, some pretty impressive running art here in San Francisco. Yeah, he's a neighbor of mine. We're, we run with other other clubs. I've known him a long time. But uh, we cooked up this idea to do some collaborations because there's some th- some things that can be draw- drawn that aren't touching each other. Uh, some art pieces, the very, very point of it is that they're two separate things not touching. And you can't do that with GPS art because GPS art is essentially one continuous line it can cross over it can overlap but it's one continuous line so frank and i actually did this initially with um with um um the the creation of adam the michelangelo um um the you know god and adam the and that segment of that painting and the whole point of that painting is that the fingers are not touching that's the essence of it and that lends itself well for uh for a running art project so for that one, uh, Frank was Adam and I was God <laughs> in that one. And we did another one, uh, the one that you mentioned, uh, the Banksy. Uh, oh, oh, we also did another hand symbol, the heart hands thing um, that where the fingers and thumbs weren't quite touching. And uh, we're, we're, we're trying to think of some other 
hand gesture. And so we have some ideas we're kicking around. So stay tuned. The Banksy was, yeah, uh, really, really nice. I, I like that one a lot, too. I did the girl. Uh, Frank did the balloon. Uh, and and uh, then he, Frank went ahead and uh, photoshopped both of them together because they're not touching. And that worked out. Really well. I'm, 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 I'm glad that we did that. Not a lot of, you said you're familiar with that piece by Banksy. I think it's one of his most famous pieces. A lot of people don't know who Banksy is, but they've kind of sort of seen that before. And some people have never seen that before. And that's okay. It's a real simple uh, thing. It doesn't have any meaning. I love how Banksy doesn't give any exposition about what this is supposed to mean. You just see it and you interpret it your own way. So that's what you can do with, with the girl with a balloon. And that's part of uh, the uh, a joy of we had doing that, that we could share it with our friends. And even if they, they're not familiar with that piece at all, they kind of get the idea. And the beauty is they can read their own meaning into it. What does it mean? Is she chasing the balloon? Did she lose her balloon? Does she not want her balloon anymore? It's up to the, up to the viewer. And that's the beauty of art. Absolutely, yeah. And what you do is art. It's like, it's amazing to see it. And it's just like, how, you know, would someone come up with that idea? How, how, what work goes into making it? And then when it's done, it's so like the actual original that uh, it's just mind blowing to see. It's really a sight to, to be seen. You know, what's kind of like some of the longest distances you've done to actually create these pieces? Well, um, um, we get into the point of uh, how, how do you, define the start end of a long distance. Here's a case, a case in point. You, the answer to that might be the running art I did of a spider web. So I decided to draw a spider web over the entire perimeter of San Francisco, like a spider would connect to different points and then draw the spiral in between. Uh, and by the way, I did some research about how spiders uh, make their webs. And it's really fascinating. Uh, but anyway, I, um, I designed a spider web and I thought, well, why don't I just put a spider in there, too? So I put a spider in there. And then I thought, well, why don't I put a little fly in there? Maybe the spider's coming to eat the fly that was trapped in the web. So the spider web with a spider and a fly. That was the longest I did. Uh, it was 100 and, I don't know, 130 miles, something like that. But I didn't do it in one, one uh, continuous uh, run. I probably could have, but why? <laughs> I did roughly about a, a marathon a day for five consecutive days. So five consecutive days. I would do, um, you know, about 25 miles the first day, stop, pause the app, uh, go home, eat, shower, sleep, and the next morning go to that same location, resume, and run for another 25 miles or so com completing my design, and then kind of repeat that. And it took me five days to do that. And it was, um, it was, it was quite an effort. I was really tired, but I was really proud that I got it finished. So that was, Strava tells me that's my longest run. Of course, um, you can, you can pause and then resume days, maybe even weeks later. I've never done it more than a day later. But, uh, if that, if you consider that one continuous run, that would be my longest run. So I don't overanalyze things that way to consider that to be one run, is it? Or is it five runs broken up by, you know, five nights of sleep? I don't know. But the end result was the design. And that's all I really care about. Wow, that is amazing to do five marathons in five days. So <laughs> how tired were you after? And how, like, did you have to train to prepare for that? Or did you already no, have the fitness? I have kind of have my fitness level. I'm, I'm like I said, I'm, I'm not training. I'm maintaining. I'm just... I'm ready to go do a marathon pretty much at the drop of the hat. Um, no problem with that. So that this, I didn't need to prep or do anything special for this. And again, these aren't races. I'm not going super fast. I don't really care about that. There's sometimes when I'm, when I'm uh, using my provisions, I'm drinking or eating something and I'm just, I'm just walking. I'm just walking for a segment while I eat or drink or whatever. Um, and, um, so I'm, I'm in no hurry. I mean, I'd like to get, get it done and finished and, re and then, whew, you know, know that I'm done and that no technical glitches are going to happen. I'm always waiting for that moment, but I'm not trying to break any, any speed records or anything like that when doing the, the art runs. 
And and what has the sort of feedback or the response to these art runs done? Has has, has anyone said you know oh it actually inspired me or motivated motivated me to run? Uh, it does. I get a lot of on my. I decided to put all these things in one place, so I started an Instagram page. So my Instagram page, Instagram page, Lenny, uh, Instagram slash Lenny Mon, um, is where I house my art runs, and uh, I get a lot of uh, messages almost daily. Uh, in fact, that's I think how you reached out to me uh, by the messenger in that app um, of people saying. You know, I love what you do. Thanks. You you really inspire me. Uh, I want to do this and I love your work. Things like that. And it's really nice to get that. A lot of, some people ask me for advice. How do I do it? I have a little copy and paste thing that I send them. Um, and uh, some people have told me that they're having trouble doing something in their city. And if I have time, I'll, I'll take a look at the map of their city and I'll maybe nut. I won't do it for them, but I'll kind of nudge them and where they can draw what they want to draw but that's where i've discovered that it's not easy to do this in 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 just any city or even in the country <clears throat> um uh, uh, san francisco has a has a grid line that makes it easy to kind of squeeze in just about any shape that you can think of now there's another way to do this which is just freeform Go, if you can find an open field something you know at, at least as big as say a football field or so uh you can just Go free form and do whatever without any constraints. That has its own set of challenges, but that's another way to to, to draw. Yeah, that's an interesting approach. You don't have the, the grid line. So you mentioned in your own running, you, you run you know, for fun, you don't run for time. Was there a certain point where it kind of came to a head where it was like, okay, I've done enough running for time. Now I'm going to switch and just go for enjoyment. Or how did that enjoyment focus come about? Well, it's pretty much all just enjoyment and just going at, you know, nice, nice pace, 10, 11, 12 minute miles. Um, even though I could do an eight or seven minute mile, the, you know, why? And when I'm doing the running art, I, I need to laser focus on where my next turn is. It's critical. I, I can't make a wrong turn. I messed the whole thing. I've done that before and I have to start all over. So I really have to focus on that. And I don't, that's why I don't usually bring music with me on my running art uh, adventures. Uh, I love music when I'm alone and I'm alone when I do these, but music kind of puts me in a la 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 kind of mindset where I just kind of go wherever. And I love those kinds of runs. But when I do running art, I need to really focus on what I'm doing. So it takes my mind into a unique place. So these runs are unique uh, to me for that reason. I have to concentrate I'm enjoying it a lot, but I'm concentrating on what I'm building as I'm doing it. And I'm even deciding on what side of the street to run on. If, you know, if I'm doing uh, you know, the elbow of something, maybe I'll make the elbow skinny or fat or whatever. So it'll it'll determine what side of the street that I run on for that. Like a true artist, you're really thinking of all the small details. Uh, exactly. I think it's akin to uh, writing a song. You're you're. Well, that's from. I think that's when you're when I'm building the, the design here, or sculpting. I think is a good. And I've never been a sculptor, but I can imagine if you're starting with a big block of marble and you're sculpting it out, you're making decisions all along the way about the curvature and the angle and everything like that. So I feel like I'm uh, I'm sculpting when I'm doing this. I'm I'm creating something and I'm putting my own touch with on it. And of course, the chaos of the GPS signal that is tracking me is is adding its own surprise element that is to be revealed once i finish uh and see see what i have done yeah yeah it's it's just paying attention and focusing on what you're doing to get more out of it so something that comes to mind for me is that i find when i run on my own i kind of white knuckle it you know i really have to like motivate myself and push myself when i run yeah. with a group i don't have that or when i'm running for something more you know i'm going to check out you know i just ran land's end for example i'm checking out the scenery and it sounds like you've always had that. So, you know, is there any, anything more that you get out of running or that kind of excites you about running, you know, socializing the art, anything else that you get out of it that helps you to kind of stay so consistent? Uh, well, with with social running, which is with groups or even with races to some degree, um, I like that I can be social with a little subgroup that I'm with or and if it gets, you know, boring or dull or whatever, I can just 
kind of speed up and work my way into a conversation with the gr- little group in front of me or ease back or whatever. So I like that I have the ability to, to sprint if I need to, to catch up with the cool people <laughs> if I need to, or to, you know, downgrade to the cool kids in the back of the bus or whatever. So um, I, I like that ability to, to, to uh, go where I want to go within limits. I, I, like I said, I'm not a sprinter. I'm more of a long distance runner and I've set my PRs. I'm happy with that. Um, I, I, with the beta breakers coming up, I, don't know what my time's going to be. And I really don't care. I just want to have fun along the way. And with the beta breakers, I also typically uh, run backwards. I go the opposite direction after I finish. So I'm doing it again uh, w- with the people coming at me. So I'm see- I'm getting this almost a stimulus overload of people and crazy costumes and revelry and going into it rather th- than going with the flow. And so that's another thing I like about the Beta Breakers. So the, so the Beta Breakers is a nine mile race here in San Francisco. So are you saying that you run the nine miles and then you run back another nine or? Uh, right. Yeah, it's a seven and a half, I think. It's a 12K, which is seven and a half, I believe. Seven and a half, correction. Uh, but still, yeah, yeah, I, I run that and, and um, uh, run that. It starts early. So by the time I'm finished, it's actually by the time I'm, I finish and I run back. Uh, it's not even noon yet. And I love that. It's like, Ooh, I've done all this and it's not even noon yet. Um, yeah, nope. Again, it's, I'm a long distance runner and I'm not trying to make a time or anything here. I'm just, uh, just trot, trotting along, enjoying myself. And, uh, I make sure that I pack provisions. I, I, if I'm thirsty, I drink, if I'm hungry, I eat and I, I know what to pack. And, uh, I have my, 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 my fuel that I always carry with me, whether I need it or not, just to know it's there. So yeah, I could keep on going. Yeah. So you, uh, you you mentioned you do yoga. Is is there any kind of part of the running that's like meditative, or do you like meditate a bit when you do yoga or after that? There's a connection there. Uh, yoga is known for being meditative, and I, I I I get that out of yoga. I often listen to music with yoga. I like to put on an old favorite album. Uh, albums are um, about forty five fifty minutes, uh, shy of shy of an hour on average. And my, I like my yoga sessions to be about that long. So I like to kind of cue my yoga sessions to, uh, to listening to an album in its entirety. And I find that meditative. I could lay back and close my eyes and listen to music. And that would be meditative too. But I like moving, moving and finding stillness and, and, and concentrating on my balance for balancing poses for that. And I get a lot out of it. Uh, everyone describes me as a mellow, chill guy. I'm not, I'm not, you know, antsy or, or, um, anything. Um, uh, and, and I, I, maybe I'm that way because I do yoga and because I run when I run, I also find that I get into a meditative state, uh, the runner's high, as we discussed, or, uh, the, uh, flow state or whatever. It's, uh, just a, a good place to be. And when I'm by myself, I can, I think I, you know, solve problems. I come up with creative ideas and sometimes I need to just dictate some brilliant idea that I had so I can remind it, remember it later. Um, so I find uh, running meditative. I find yoga meditative. And I'm already, I already start as a chill dude who really doesn't need to meditate in the first place. So I'm just relaxed and, 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 and cool, calm and collected all the time. You're like a, a Zen Buddha running around the streets of San Francisco. <laughs> there you go. And you just gave me an idea. Maybe I could uh, design and run a Buddha shape. Hmm. Okay. Stay tuned. There we go. <laughs> nice. So, so it sounds as though you get more out of the running, you know, through also the ideas and, and the meditation. So it's like, again, I feel like you get so much out of the running that it really, it does a lot for you. Whereas we kind of talked off air about people running purely for health. W- would you find that there's like multiple benefits you receive from it outside of the health stuff? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. We're, the benefits of running are, are, are well known. Um, I, um, my, some people say, and you probably heard this, you're going to ruin your knees. Your knees are gonna, not going to last. And that's not true at all. My knees are in great shape. I get sore. I get little pains here and there. And I recover and everything's fine. But my knees are fine. I think my knees are in good shape, not despite running, but my knees are in good shape because I run. And there's been studies I've heard of lately that confirms that, that people with bad knees are the people who aren't using their knees. They're not running. So 
uh, so it's good good for that. Um, and I just I, I find running um, uh, good good all over with no downsides. I don't uh, push myself to. I don't sprint to my absolute limit. I could. I absolutely could, but I don't. I don't really care about that much anymore. And I think that is why I don't really have any injuries. I don't really. Some of uh, some runners who do that, they oh, they break something and they need to lay off or or dial back for days or weeks or sometimes longer. And uh, that just just doesn't happen happen to me. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm I'm happy to be a runner, and uh, it's I I don't know what it would be like if I was not a runner. Like I said. Uh, I've, uh, I don't know what it's like to be an adult and not be a runner. Uh, I, who knows, I, maybe I'd be, you know, sick and needing a cane or, uh, maybe not be, I might not be alive. I don't know. But anyway, I, I enjoy running. The benefits are a, a plus. Uh, it's not the reason I run when I, when I'm running, I'm on the streets a lot and I often run by gyms and I, and gyms, I don't know why it's by design, but they put their treadmills by the window. So people on the treadmill are like looking out the window or maybe they're looking at a TV that's inside the building. But when I pass by them, I, I, I mean, good for them for moving, but I'm looking at their faces and they're just, they're, they're not really, I don't really see any joy in their face. They're just like doing it because they feel like they have to do it. Meanwhile, I'm outside and I got this goofy grin on my face here. So I'm having a, a great time in the fresh air. And uh, I'm hoping that maybe they'll see me and just take their their running up a notch here and just go outside and don't pay. Who needs to pay a fee for, for a gym, for a treadmill in a stuffy room with the TVs blaring? Go outside. It's it's great. Out. It's, this is San Francisco. The weather's fine. I I was uh, I was in um, Texas. Um, last weekend for a family thing. And, uh, and I didn't run, I was spending time with family, but I was reminded that, that the weather there's, there's running weather and then there's stay inside on the lazy boy recliner weather. <laughs> and, uh, I'm, I'm grateful to live in San Francisco where the weather is so nice and clean and, and the breeze is always flowing off the Pacific ocean and the fog is beautiful. And it's just feels good to run through it, especially when you're surrounded by all the parks. There's a lot of parks here in San Francisco. I think I read that about 20% of the land area is a park and that uh, no resident is more than a 10 minute walk from a park. And there's some good parks here. You can be in the middle of a park. You said you went to through Land's End recently. So you've probably been at a place that looked the same today as it did a thousand or 10,000 years ago. Well, except for the, the beautiful Golden Gate Bridge over there in the fog, but that's another beautiful story. <laughs> you mentioned so many great things there. Yeah, to live, I think. San Francisco, I heard, is the healthiest city in, in, the, in the U.S. I'm not sure, you know, I have to fact check that, but it's, it's definitely up there. And we're very lucky with all the amenities right. we have. And yeah, to get off our phones and technology and to be outside in nature is so beneficial. Personally, for me anyway, I find it's like, it's like a natural stress reliever. And to, to do the yoga as well with the running, I think they really fit well together. So you mentioned injuries. Do you... Like, how do you manage injuries and what does yoga do for your injuries, if anything at all? I think just from my experience running um, and I, I found a, a, a proper gait for myself and a stride and uh, and and I, I know how to run again. Thanks to my it all goes back to my high school uh, gym teacher who <laughs> nudged me to get on the track team here. He some things I still remember, like don't clench your fists when you run elbows back, knees high. Um, you know, pretend like you have a string on the top of your head, raise it up. That's good for everything. And so I have a good, good runner stride and it works for me. And, um, uh, I, no one wants to be injured. Uh, uh, and in the rare occasions when I am injured, it's from pushing myself too hard, going too fast, uh, or too fast up a hill or down a hill. Uh, um, uh, and the, any other injury I get or something like a, the occasional blister um, and or, or chafing on my heel, minor things, minor, minor things. But no, I don't get injuries. I don't plan to get any. And the where I'm at right now, where I'm running, but not trying to break any records, conversational pace type of running, 
uh, is I found my sweet spot. It re- really works for me and I plan to keep on doing it. And I love another thing I love about running is people don't seem to age out of it. Uh, boxers, football players, baseball players, uh, you know, they at some point they they get in their 30s and they can't do it anymore. But running, uh, you've seen people just continue to do it uh, throughout life. I think we all slow down a little bit here. I think I'm hitting that point. Uh, but uh, I'm enjoying it just as much, if not more, as as always. And I don't think about weightlifting or or any other uh, fitness because I don't feel like I really need to do anything. I'm really happy with where I am. So my existing uh, daily yoga and three times a week running more or less is um, is a real, I'm in a real happy place. Brilliant. Yeah. I think the main thing you mentioned is enjoyment and also being consistent. And I think you mm-hmm. mentioned earlier as well, you see yourself as a runner. So it's kind of like, you know, an issue some people have is they don't see themselves as an athlete. So an athlete moves or a runner moves, they do, you know, regular activity and that benefits your, your, your regular weekly running so much more because it's almost like, it's not like a have to or a need to, it's kind of just like, it's very natural, you know, Mm -hmm. and the yoga as well. That's yoga is a great addition to the running. I hear a lot of people recommend that. So Mm -hmm. you, you mentioned also off air about uh, like planning the runs and nutrition. Can you just talk a little bit about that and how, you know, that's helped you stay so consistent for such a long term. I keep it simple. I I eat when I'm hungry and I drink when I'm thirsty. I, I don't follow any plan, you know, where you, some of these apps and and watches these days have like a calorie plan, like reminding you, you need X number of calories at this point. I, I just, I just go by how I feel and I'm, I'm good with that. I always pack provisions, I liquids and, and food. And I'm, yeah, I'm all over the map. Uh, lately, I'm I'm realizing instead of all these formulated um, gels and and bars and and such, um, uh, something as simple as um, a, 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 a bean and cheese burrito, uh, an apple, um, is is adequate nutrition that seems to work work well. I just whatever's on hand, uh, I could uh, I could I could bring with me, but I seem to get a lot of samples from races and races race expos and other events here that 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 uh, i just continue to to eat power uh energy bars gels goos um um gummies um um uh uh whatever but i i i just um i just eat um i eat what you might call a whole foods plant-based diet i don't eat meat very much i'm not a vegetarian but meat's not a big thing with me. I don't find I need meat. Um, but if I'm planning to do a longer run, I'll, I'll, I'll consciously ease up on the, on the Doritos and the, and the chocolate and eat more things like, um, nochi. I had nochi, which is a potato based, um, uh, uh, food. And, uh, I found that nochi, uh, really gives me good long lasting fuel for, for a run, uh, just as much as any, any kind of a bar does or or a gel apple surprisingly an apple is good um it it works for me you have to find what works for yourself and i think you you have to be aware to not buy into the hype of this new scientifically scientifically formulated for runners product that is overly expensive and and um uh, and may work but may not work as well as as a simple apple would work recently as fuel is um my current favorite is um, uh, peanut butter filled pretzels. So a little pretzels with peanut butter inside. Yeah, the salt seems, I need, you know, sodium replacement and the pretzels, it, it gives a nice um, um, carbo, carbo lift and, the, and the, the peanut butter is well known for its, uh, its advantages. So yeah, you could go to Trader Joe's and just find good running food, just a, a quick shopping visit there. And I'm not a, compensated spokesman for for any product because i have i didn't mention any product at all here <laughs> yeah but keep keeping it simple for sure definitely because nutrition can be very complicated and you know runners <laughs> you know you hear a lot of runners have uh digestive issues so to know what right. works is key so yeah I'm, I'm lucky in that regard i don't seem to have issues with that and um uh, yeah so i'm i'm, I'm fortunate uh, I, I i i but yeah but then again 
sometimes I see runners getting overly precise. I've done that before in years past. I've thought there's these plans, you know, eat this X number of minutes before that and and everything. And I've tried that and it, it works here, but it's, it's just too much. It takes the fun out of it. And as we talked about before, I like the fun in running. Yeah, you want to keep it light and not too serious. And that helps to make it more fun, which is great. So, yeah. You know, with all your experience, I'm sure you've picked up a lot of knowledge and you've obviously gave us a lot of tips already. But what are some tips that like would help a, a newbie runner or, you know, what are some newbie mistakes that, that runners make that, you know, you typically see and that, you know, you can recommend <clears throat> people avoid? Um, I've noticed um, a lot of new runners and I frequently run with people who are new to running as they uh, sometimes I like to ask them, what what are your fears, uncertainties, doubts? What scares you about running? And it's a good icebreaker too to ask somebody who's new to running to get them to really tell you how they feel. And they, they, in my experience, they are afraid of an injury. They're afraid of like mangling their knee or getting a sprained ankle. Or the, um, the other thing I find interesting is they're afraid they're going to dehydrate and pass out from lack of, of water. Um, and of course you can dehydrate and pass out from lack of water while you're running. But if you just, Drink when you're thirsty. I think that's really all you need to do. You don't need to be overly concerned about it. And uh, not just water, but things that have water in it. The water is in it as well. Even coffee. You know, I, I, I like coffee. I like caffeine a lot. It works for me. And some people say, don't drink coffee. It dehydrates you. Uh, I'm not sure about that. Coffee is mostly water. Just, you know, just drink more of it if, it, if you think it's going to dehydrate you. I don't really think that's true. Anyway. So I just I, what I do is I try to find their 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 concerns and without being a licensed nutritionist or a trained coach or anything like that, I just try to kind of let them know to relax that it's going to be OK. Drink when you're thirsty, eat when you're hungry, follow the proper form, watch your form when you're when you're running and be mindful of that. And uh, and uh, everything's going to be OK. Oh, and don't forget to have fun. Yeah, enjoyment is a huge, huge part of it to stay with it. What uh -huh. were the form tips that you mentioned? You know, what are some of the kind of common issues you see with people's form? Uh, I think that that um, uh, high knees is good. I think a lot of people don't. They 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 do the shuffle where they're not really late raising their knees. And I think they're trying to save. Think they, I think they think they're saving energy by not raising their knees up. But but that's something you have to do i think here to be an effective runner high knees and i also like to point out to them something that you might have noticed too if you look at the elite runners doing the you know the the championship uh long distance runners um they are their their bodies are moving in such a way that their torso is like fluid their torso is like going very smooth and only their legs and their arms are moving their head and their torso are smooth and if they're running like behind a a fence or something where you can't see their legs, it looks like they're on an escalator. They're just going by. So I try to do that myself here. And I try to encourage people to think about that and to just move your legs and your arms, uh, elbows back, knees high, and don't slouch, don't lean back, but, you know, pull that string, that imaginary string on top of your head and kind of keep that all through your run, all through life. That's a yoga thing too. And a dancer thing and, you know, and charm school. <laughs> so it's always good to remember Pull that string. Don't slouch. <laughs> yeah, don't slouch and keep the abs tight so your your torso is, is upright. That's that's a really useful one and easy to do. So, Lenny, that's uh, that's all the time we have. Is there any kind of final message you want to leave people with before we wrap up? Uh, I'd say just do it. Get out there and and run. Don't overthink it. Uh, follow a plan if you need to. Listen to advice from people that you trust. Uh, but just just do it. Just go. Go, go, go do one mile. After you do one mile, I promise you, you're probably going to say, hey, I can do another mile and another and another and another. The first few steps are the hardest. Go do it. Um, ex go outside, explore your neighborhood. Uh, look at your local parks. Parks are, are woefully underused. Um, take advantage of them. The city provides them for you. And most importantly, have fun. <laughs> Enjoy it. Absolutely. It's meant to be fun. Park runs are a great way to get more runs in all over the world. And if you're yeah. ever lacking in motivation, look at Lenny Strava and see his beautiful art. Okay.
Okay. Well, thanks so much for having me, Ross, on your podcast. It's been a pleasure talking with you. Thanks, Lenny.